I work in regulatory. Um, and I started in regulatory in 2003. Um, I was, um, I was, I'm trained as a chemical engineer and I moved into regulatory um, because I, I had a passion for that type of work and at Genentech what we were doing um, at the time with Avastin. Um, there was a connection with Avastin that I had and that my grandmother had colorectal cancer at the time. And I was given this opportunity to be a part of the Avastin Biologics license application. And part of one of my first jobs in this was the, the polycoms weren't plugged in. And I would literally have to crawl under the table and plug them in. And that was my first job in regulatory and to take notes. And I remember sitting there during the specification negotiation, and I was, a, I was on the process side of things. I hadn't been exposed to true specification setting yet. And hearing the specification discussion happening, and I took notes, and it's like, this is really interesting. Shortly after that, I went to w, my first WCBP, and there was a workshop on specifications. And the same people that had been around the table at Genentech were now in the room with the FDA that had been on the other side of the phone. And they had the most robust discussion. And I sat there and was like, this is amazing. And I'm not sure they came to alignment. I'm not sure, you know, I, I probably at the time maybe didn't understand all of the technical nuances because I was still learning. But what I took away from that is that Regulators and industry can come together, they can have these robust discussions face to face, and then they can go and they can have a beer together and have this depth of mutual respect and understanding that really drives bringing drugs like Avastin, which saves, saved my grandmother's life to the market. I mean, it's, so putting all of that together so early in my career um, really was foundational, and I think that's why I have stayed in regulatory and continued to really grow um, in my volunteer efforts in CAS as well.